to, but how this helps you grow. So the dead shall rise and, and one heaven. Now in one heaven, when you read the covenant, there are difficult concepts associated with it. And one of the concepts that is probably none more difficult, more difficult than any of them, is the concept of what is happening to uh, the uh, idea of a place, a spiritual place called hell, and what is happening to that spiritual force. And up until now, <clears throat> we feel comfortable in considering just that there was some kind of eternal damnation. Well, if there's something worse than death, <clears throat> then I was brought up, and I'm sure a number of you were brought up to believe that that place is called hell for spirits. No question. That whether that be interpreted as the, um, uh, whether that be called um, denial of God or an absence of God or an absence of, of um, uh, love or whether it be called torment, um, it has been there um, as, a, as a powerful weapon uh, against us uh, and against um, communities for now well over a thousand years in different religions and faiths that if we don't comply with those that rule the churches we will go to hell if our enemies um, do the wrong thing by us <coughs> we condemn them to hell and if we don't follow being a good slave uh, we will be denied heaven and we will go to hell well that is a weapon <coughs> that, that continues to, to poison this world and there is a reality in this if war continues in heaven there can be no peace on earth if war continues in heaven and if you believe in hell then war continues in heaven so if war continues in heaven there can be no peace on earth and these guys have known about this these guys have known this is exactly why they push and continue this so in fulfilment of our faith when the covenant says hell is emptied divine compassion not man's compassion not our, our, our failed emotions but divine compassion says no soul no spirit is condemned not one this is an overwhelming powerful force that denies the most evil from having any currency other than their own beliefs. They are cut off, literally cut off from any authority. That the only thing standing is how long they can keep their flesh on this earth. Because when they die, the, the spirit is united. But in terms of hell, when hell is, is ended, the dead shall rise. The dead shall rise. There, there is the fulfilment of that promise. The covenant fulfills that promise. The dead shall rise. Hell is over. Now, <clears throat> you, you think about that for a second, and people go, "Well, that's okay. <clears throat> that's a pretty, that's a pretty deep concept. That's a pretty historical concept." And I understand that that's not enough for people because. The prophecy, <clears throat> that literally fulfills a prophecy, and if one was to consider prophecies uh, a ticker box, then that ticks a box. But I also know that that is not the same as believing the literal belief that physical dead will rise in from the death into this temporal realm, that we will see it with our own eyes. We will see dead rise in this life, in this body before us. So let me help and strengthen those that are on the call of your faith further by telling you how that will happen well all of you hopefully have read enough of the positive law to have read about Sester KV trusts what is one of the core presumptions of the Sester KV trust Destry what's the key presumption you are say, what hmm? say again what is one of the key presumptions that they use to create a Sester KV trust for every man, woman and child on this planet oh, you got me. yeah you got me no you're, you're dead you're dead you're dead you are dead 
Oh, okay. Their whole planetary system of money, power, courts, law, is on the false and unholy and evil presumption that you are dead. The living dead. Am I wrong? No, you're correct. Yes, yeah, you are correct. And what are we doing with the canon law? What are we doing to every man, woman and child, whether they know it or not? What are we doing? We're letting them know that we live. And, and we're freeing them, aren't we? Aren't we? We're restoring their, their, their life status. Yes? Yes. With canon law, yes. Because it's canon law. Because it's the highest form of law. It's the form of law. It's the rule of law, isn't it? Yeah? I believe yeah. so. So, uh, am, am I, is it fair to say that we are witnessing the miracle that before our eyes, the dead are absolutely physically rising? before our eyes one by one yes yeah well what does Lee how does that sit with your faith what does that do to your faith well Frank I have a very firm testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ and I know through the promptings of the Holy Ghost that the things that we have encountered and are doing are for our growth and our understanding to bring us into the higher elements that Jesus wants us to have. And without them, we can't, we can't grow. We have been starved for so long for knowledge. You know, clearly he said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And we, everyone on this whole planet is questing for the truth, for knowledge, because they've been so suppressed. And therefore, these inklings come out, they are gold cherubs. I mean, we, we grasp upon them and hold upon them and cherish them to see how to use them and to operate with them. It's like I told Alton the other day. I says, in life there's always two roads. For every decision there is a stop sign. One road leads up, the other leads quickly down. And if you choose the hard road, it will always lead you up. So I feel as we gain this knowledge, which we've never had, it's absolutely wonderful because it does increase my testimony because I do know and have been told and prompted that this is correct. Thank you, Lee. How, how does that feel with, with others on the call um, who might want to share how they feel about that? Very nice. Thanks, Terry. Um, Terry, how are you going? Can you hear us? Yes. You've you've witnessed the highs and the lows of all this. <laughs> <laughs> the ups and the downs. <laughs> How does this sit with you in, in witnessing what we're talking about? I mean, is this, is this one of those things that helps affirm for you and your feeling of, of belief and faith and how you feel about things? Yes, absolutely. Very well said by Lee. And, um, so I would have to agree very much so. And thank you. And the, and the reason I, I, I share that is I... These things are, well, I'll come to that point in a second, but when you're reading these elements of Ikeda, and I'm not saying that everything is word perfect, it's not. You'll find that there are typos and things that are still being done. It's, it's, you're, you're witnessing it unfold before your eyes, and it needs your help. It, 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 this is, this is, is not happening on its own. You are the heroes, as I said. You are, you are the ones that people will be looking to to, to, to strengthen their faith but when you are going through this I am very mindful because it's happened to me when you read some of these things it will cause you to, not to challenge your faith but to challenge your wisdom and your accepted knowledge of things 
because it will open your eyes to uh, what things mean. And that's why I wanted to share what is one of the most important signs of the dead shall rise. That, look, we we didn't declare the world is dead. We, we didn't come up with this perverse system of Sester KV trucks. And it wasn't around at the time, 2,000 years ago, of Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, whatever term one may choose to, to use. They created this after that. But in doing that, in the, as the great spheres of life, and as the great tumblers of good, evil, right, wrong, balance, yin and yang, birth, rebirth, as those unfold, it comes right now to this point that enough is enough. And no more will we live under the perverse presumption when we go and pay our taxes, when we go to court, when we perform our roles, that we are dead cargo, dead things belonging to some corrupt pope in Rome. So I just want to share that because it is you are going to get roadblocks when you read this. There's no question. I've given you, I've shared you the ecclesiastical law. It's going to be challenging some of what you read in the ecclesiastical law. But always remember that 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 there is a deeper, deeper purpose for this. And when you open your mind to what you know in your heart and what you were brought up to be true and see it from wisdom, it should strengthen your faith in all aspects and not weaken it one iota. So I just wanted to share that and thank you for letting me go uh, down that path because I know that's a little bit left of centre to talking about financial systems. (laughs) I know money is what rules the world <laughs> but uh, you can't you know the, the world doesn't actually function because of money it functions because of belief and ideas and what we're talking about money comes on top people get it the wrong way around so thank you um, well um, I'm really open to questions that any of you have as to how you're going with positive law questions about what you've read in positive law um, how to use it, any more knowledge. Um, there's a lot there to read. How you've been going with it. Um, please, questions, comments. Anyone? The positive law. I, I need to start learning more about positive law right now. I'm not very familiar with it, unfortunately. Well? Um, I'm going to start doing that. Uh, I'm going to get with my dad and he's got a lot to teach me. Good. And I'm going to listen and learn as much as I can. Good. Um, how, are folks get, how are folks going out there? I mean, is the a, is a message getting out, do you think? Are people becoming aware of, of the canons and the challenge we're making against uh, the Pope's claim to run the planet? Are people waking up to that? I will be. Yes, sir. That's good. I will be doing all I can to get that information out to other people so they can learn that knowledge. Once I learn it. What about yourself? You know, it's interesting, Frank. Lord promised, he said in the latter days, that he would send his most elect spirits to the earth. Yes. And I was explaining to Dalton, I said, you know, Dalton, I said, Heavenly Father let you out of jail today that you might be here at this moment in this time to listen to what's being said. I said, really, if you understood who you are, you are one of his most valiant spirits because at 18 years old, you just come into this life. And I said, you're going to have to make a lot of choices. And... Don't and I have had this talk before about how the adversary steals our time, the most valuable gift we have. And I think while he had a time to sit there and ponder about his time, he started to understand, to see that the adversary had been stealing his time. He's very brilliant. He's got a good mind on him. And I know, honestly, that he will be a valiant warrior. Mm. For the cost of Christ. Mm. 
Well, 